might nurse all the way to the Indies. But we must have a talk before you sail. Doesn't she ride well? She'd look better to me if she were more than half paid for. Oh, she will be, she will be. What? One day we shall have a fleet of them. And owing money on all of them, we must have that talk, I insist. You've fobbed me off long enough. This time you're going to listen to me. You... James, will you... <laughs> James! I happen to know, Mr. Callum, that you have a ship sailing to the west coast of Italy in a day or two, the Daphne, hmm? 900 tons. Tell me something I don't know, but uh, tell me something else. Who are you and who is this important passenger? Our secrecy is vital until he's at sea. Then the danger is over. Oh, all very well for you, but what about my ship? You will turn down 300 guineas, Callum. <laughs> my ship's worth a lot more than that. You refuse to help, then? I didn't say I wouldn't help. I don't suppose you've got on your list a small ship which is sailing this very next tide, the uh, Charlotte Rose. Owned by the Anedian Brothers. I have, thank you, but my superiors would prefer better conditions, a larger vessel. Yes, but on the other hand, uh, who would suspect your important passenger to be on a small schooner? What's more, the Onedans need the money. Offer them a hundred pounds and they'll jump at it. I must have another shot, James. I'll no. be put off no longer. Put some Chandler in before my ship. Your ships! Look, you so shut the cannon, not me. Well, only because you put me in the position where I had to. By rights, you should set me up again. <laughs> what with? Your profits? Mm. You've had enough money passed through your fingers these last three months, and where's it gone to, eh? Eh? Chartering boats here, buying cargoes there. You've not a penny to show for it in your hand. No. Nor mine. What do you want me to do? Stuff the sovereigns in the mattress like father? Well, at least we would be solvent. Yeah, solvent and poor. Oh, I mean to have a fleet of ships. Look, James, I... Look, I don't mind living in that warehouse. We had to long enough. But you have a fine house now, and I have an infant son to think of. Uh, and now you'll be away for God knows how long. And we're still not nearly getting another shot. Let's see. 20 days out. Oh, yeah. Fair wind. Look, James. Uh, look, I'm not asking for anything grand. Just a small... Brother Robert, how much do you think a not very grand Chandler's shop costs? Uh, uh, no more than, what, £200? Mm, £200 plus on ingoings, a stock. Well, I'm... I can't open shop without stock. Mm, that's another £150. You need £350. Well, it's a good investment, is it not? Oh, indeed it is. And <laughs> where do we get the money? You'd find the money quick enough if you were buying another ship. We're in the shipping business. Chandler in his shipping business, for heaven's sake, James! Look, I am not leaving Look, Robert, until you... That's my liquid asset. One, two, three guineas. Now, you tell me, where shall I find the rest, eh? I'm afraid it's not a grand ship, sir. She looks superior to some living quarters I have experienced. I ask no privileges, Sir George. I'm bound for Livorno direct and sailing on this tide. So I see. The captain is paying off the stevedore. What is his name? Anedin. James Anedin. He owns her too. It looks as though he still has to take on crew. I will spend the little time I have left in England saying farewell. Signor. The director's meeting's over, Robert. My 85% says we cannot afford to buy you another shop. I don't know what I'm going to tell Sarah. Uh, oh. Do you mind, Truth? Captain Nodidon? I'm his brother. He's through there. It's your business, sir. The brief. Return to sale. Full of Bordeaux, yes, I know. I can't take emergency cargo. cargo. I'm fully laden. Railway iron, cotton goods and woolens. Not particularly lucrative freight. Your bonus is the only profit you'll see out of it. How do you know my business? Yes, that's my cabin. Ah, yes. Now, this must be the mates. Good. To the point, sir. Oh, I want you to take a passenger. I have no passenger facilities. Now, you have if you put the mate with the crew. Now, isn't that not worth 100 pounds? 100 pounds. Yeah, that's more than passenger ships, John. And this is no ordinary passenger. Why choose my ship? You are recommended to me. By whom? Well, he was wrong. He didn't jump at 100 pounds. No, no, come on. Who recommended my ship? Mr. Callum. Oh, I see. What do you say to two hundred pounds, Captain O'Neill? Two hundred pounds, James. Two hundred pounds. Now that is quite an increase. Uh, Mister. My name is Immaterial. You accept, I take it. Let me see now. You offered this to Callan, who turned you down and pushed you onto me. Hmm? Not pushed, sir. Two hundred pounds. There's a risk. There must be secrecy, sir. That is what we pay for. Perhaps a little risk, but Britain does rule the waves, you know. <laughs> Callan won't risk one ship of his old fleet. Yet you expect me to risk one of my only two. How do we know that it's legal? Do I look like a lawbreaker, sir? 400 pounds. My offer was a generous one. 400 pounds in cash. 200 now. 200 on your return. After safe delivery and sworn secrecy. Hmm. Agreed.
There's your shop, Robert. I will make sure of the other 200, because I shall need that for stock. James, uh, Mr Baines will not be sailing with you. He was taken ill after eating a meal at the hostel. I can't sail without Baines. Your sister's put him to bed. Must be bad. Doesn't need nothing to say. Well, you can't delay it, James. You'll miss your delivery bonus. Uh, have to get another mate. Oh, and uh, clean that cabin out, will you? Royalty or someone coming. Royalty? Well, it can be no less to pay £400 for a voyage. £400? Ah, this will make it sparkle. Yeah. And I'll get you a shot that you'll approve of, James. You'll see. Oh, no, don't go silent, Bob. Not until I get back. Right. Uh, good winds and fair weather, James. Uh, you don't really mean royalty. For that money, it can be the devil in camp. James, there's a man asking for you. I will send him down. Now we'll see who it is. <clears throat> Come, ma'am. Is Mr. Baines mate on the ship, Captain? Who wants to know? Oh, Alan Metcalf. He made papers. Oh, and the spark. You're quick off the mark, eh? Aye, I saw Baines taken bad in the hostel. And, well, Liverpool has more ships than practice sailors. You know that, Captain. Oh, what a crew. What complement do I need? Schooner this size, one AB, one ordinary, and one boy. Why not two AB? <laughs> you don't take a mate on just for orders. I pick men, I'll make sweat. And I sweat with them. Yeah. Get me a crew like that. Sharp, we'll sail this tide. Aye, Captain. James, who is this passenger? I don't know. You didn't ask? <laughs> ask too many questions and you'll never be rich. My compliments to Prime Minister Palmerston. One day I will repay this kindness, Sir George. I will convey your message. Will you go aboard now, sir? No, I will not. Until the very last second, Sir George. All ready for sail, Captain. Now, all these men are known to you. Aye, uh, they've sailed with me before. Then I shall look to you for a smooth trip. Or it'll be that, Captain. Where's your passenger? I'm ready to cast off. Cast off, Captain. Cast off. Well, I'll go forward. I'll go aft. <sighs> Captain O'Neill, I'm indebted to you. Oh, welcome aboard, sir. My wife will receive you below. Thank you. Don't let me disturb you. I had a tow once. He had three whores in tow. And fighting a battle at the same time. What a man for Manuel Santos to kill. James, we're sailing without the passenger. Oh, I thought it was my husband, sir. It's my misfortune now. That I am not. Your cabin, sir. Thank you. If there is anything you need. I will communicate any further needs to you. Thank you. That's all, Mr. May. He has charm. I'm more concerned he keeps out of our way. Now the time, no space for nice it is. He hasn't asked for any comforts. He could well have. No, well, don't encourage him. We've enough to do as it is. <laughs> Captain, permit me the private use of my cabin. I knocked. Uh, but you did not allow me the privilege to invite you in. I'll make a note of your request. I don't allow firearms on board ship. Ah, this is a present from English friends. Have you ever seen one before? Mm. New invention? The breach revolves each time you press the trigger. Try it. You find it necessary to carry a weapon? <laughs> that depends which country I am in. Mm. I don't know anything about you, sir. Would you care to enlighten me? I will have a document for you. Oh, I'll wait for it with impatience. Uh, my property, Captain. On board ship, the captain is law. Nobody else takes it into his hands, whoever he may be. Uh, that is for self-defence. You will be protected if protection you need. Your property will be returned when we get ashore. My pistol, Captain. I'm sorry. When do I do it? You said well out. We are well out. Biscales send a good wind. Make it look more like an accident. It's got to be an accident. Remember that. 
Please send a better wind. Not much wind. So keep her free. Keep her free, aye, aye, Captain. Quando spunta la luna, malicchiare le ghidice, non amore. You're comfortable, sir. I'm very, thank you. You are bound for your home country? Home? Yes. My country. Oh, I do not enjoy good health in my limbs. I hope my country will use me before I break up. I don't understand. Your country is in one piece. Mine is shattered. Since Napoleon I, much of it has been occupied by France and Austria. You refer to Italy? Ah, now, when you say Italy, do you mean the Kingdom of Napoli, the Kingdom of Piedmont, or where? Sir, I'm not sufficiently well versed. My, my home, my home will be a united Italy. Italy for all the Italians. Speak as if you will make it so. I have been described as faithful to a cause. Uh, faithless to women. You've been married more than once? In church, once. In my heart. Many times, and knowing my heart, there will be many times more. Confess to a stranger that you're faithless. Oh, I said I have been so described. I wager not one of my mistresses would claim that I have been other than a good husband. My wife is dead. Sealed orders, Captain. Oh. Who from? It is wiser you should not know. Sardinia? I agreed to take you to Livorno, where I am headed. Ah, but you pass hard by La Madalena, a haven on the north coast of Sardinia. That is where I will land, Captain. James! Does he think he's chartered the ship? I think he does. He's used to having orders obeyed. He's told you who he is. No, but clearly he's no ordinary passenger. On board my ship he is. Enter. This document is on plain paper. Doesn't state your name, nor is this scratched writing signed. It is the hand of Sir George Pelham who arranged for me to sail with you. He is a senior member of the British Foreign Office, so of course he did not sign his name. Is very prudent of him. What's to do with the Foreign Office? Please, accept my word that you are better not to know. My passenger's name, please, for the ship's log. Am I a passenger? Not freight, very high value freight for 400 pounds. How do I know that it's not in my interest to know your name? I have powerful enemies set against me, sir. Who would prevent this voyage if they could. If you transport me wittingly, you may set them against you, too. Oh, I'm not concerned with your state amongst men. Not men, sir. Nations. Now, if I withhold my name, you are not involved. Please, let it remain so. Very well. I'll consider it. <clears throat> Looks like we'll never get a blasted wind. Relieve Manuel. Can he do it like it was an accident without a wind? Relieve him. We do it now. Yeah. There. You didn't ask me here just to inquire how the Charlotte Roads was faring. Oh, come on, courtesy. That's all. Well, no news yet. She should make Gibraltar very soon. If all is well, good. Uh, there. Tell me that you're inquiring about another shop. Uh, are you going back into the chartering business? Then? I have regretted selling my old shop to you ever since. Couldn't send it back to you with all the will in the world. No, that's true. Because you lost no time in knocking it down. I had to have that because of my new dock. Oh, it was just an ordinary business transaction. Nothing personal. But w would you care for a cigar? I don't see any reason why we shouldn't do business again together. Are you saying that you've got another shop for sale? Well, there's a druggist uh, at the end of his lease, and it could be a chandler's. Same size shop. Want to take a look at it? All right, I will. May I make up your bunk, sir? It is already made, ma'am. I'm used to fending for myself. Perhaps a woman's touch might add to your comfort whilst you're taking a turn on deck. I love God's air. Look in your glass. See how clear it keeps your pretty eyes. It 
is not for you to pass compliments, sir. Oh, no English woman has forbidden me the privilege in turn. I'm not forbidding you, on Oh, you are not used to compliments. It is not the English custom for husbands to compliment their wives. My husband's a very busy man, sir. I'll see to your cabin. According to Gibraltar, Captain? Two days late. Ah, never plan for the wind, only for the lack of it. I like to look out to sea, it aids my thinking. You well. That topsail sheet's falling. Get lost. Boy! Why did you run when you saw me? I didn't, sir. What's your name, boy? Jackie, sir. I'll stop the crew working, sir. My apologies, Captain. Look out! And the handless of mate! Thank you. On deck! I'll see them, sir. I will. Bring it down below. My eyes. What happened? Is it great? Is there nothing more? A clumsy Spaniard. I warn you, Captain, you may not have been clumsy. Aye. What's that, my crew standards? I mean, it may have been intended. Deliberate. Well, has that man sailed with you before? No, none of them ever. None? We'll soon see if it was deliberate. No, no, not to chastise him for bad seamanship. Nothing more. What have you got to say? It broke, sir. Mm. The block. I let it go on the lines. How did it drop, you idiot? The rope was gone bad. Fred, he means. I don't know what he means. You tried to tell me that the lines of my ship are rotten. It's frayed right enough, sir. That's not rotten. That's chaff. That's bad seamanship, Mr. Mate. I thought you crewed good men. Right. I want every line on this ship over off. All men. Sharp about it. Aye, sir. Your Mr. Mate is first sailing, too. Ah, Mr. Baines, my regular matey. When, sir? It went down with stomach pains. Oh, when? Just before we sailed. Ah, I see. You're not saying Baines was deliberately poisoned? Many ships have first sailing crews. The sailors are not so well paid that they can wait for a ship to turn round. They must take the first ship they can get. But your first sailing mate may have picked them for a purpose. To kill you? I may need to defend myself. My pistol, if you please. First, I must know who you are. In exchange. <laughs> there is nothing to fear, ma'am. You believe they tried to kill you, and yet you show no fear? It has happened before. I know what I am destined to do. Your name, sir? Monsieur Giuseppe Garibaldi. Found returning home to my tiny island of Caprera. Now, we must, must act on the assumption that your crew is a gang of hired assassins. Your assumption, sir? Uh, there will be another mishap, you will see. My accidental death would not cause a political turmoil, as would my assassination. Well, I have a pistol. Locked away for safety. Safer, if you carry it. Loaded. That away. You said use the knife and over the side. It is still an accident when no one is looking. But not yet. We're running for Gibraltar. It'll be dark when we tie up. Why not now? Because we could be lucky again. Against my knife, no one is lucky. I said could be. If he is, we save our necks. Cross the frontier into your country. So put it away. I can wait. Oh, but what did you mean when you said, well, it's a fair price, but steer clear? You asked me advice, that's it. Don't touch it. You didn't like it from the minute I mentioned that it was Cullen's shop. Exactly. Why didn't he put it up for auction for the best possible price? Well, that would be Cullen's way, yes. Supposing James doesn't get this other 200 pounds? from this secret transaction that you won't talk about, and that you're committed to purchasing this shop from Callan. Here he is. The advisors tell him no. What reason shall I give? You have better property in view. 
But I haven't. You will have. I'll find you one. Well, it's uh, nice to run into you, Robert. I'll give your regards to Elizabeth. Oh, yes, and uh, my little nephew. How is he? Oh, it's not so little. Growing more like his mother every day. Oh. Good day, Mr. Cullen. Making poor time, Mr. Mate. It's the wind's fault, Captain. Not the crew's. Oh, I'll lay no blame. We'll be ready for shore leave. Glad to see the rock. No more than I will. A bonus to lose at this rate. General, why is your journey secret? Ah, so that my enemies do not know I am so close to my homeland. Uh, poised for when the call comes. But why is my country helping you? Are we not supposed to be neutral? Uh, I knew that you and I had thoughts in common. We do not think like the politicians do. Now, France and Austria, mm -hmm. they may go to war over division of their spoils. If they do, there will be a full-scale European war into which your country will be drawn. Now, your Prime Minister, Palmerston, he thinks the only way to prevent a bloodbath is for both invaders to be driven from my country. Which you hope to do. I have sworn to do it. Now, if Palmerston uh, helps me openly, he will make enemies of powerful neighbours. Uh, so his public affairs must show neutrality. And nobody would expect to find you on a ship like the Charlotte Rose. Ah, but someone must have followed me. And you may be in some danger because of me. It quickens my heart a little, but I don't regret it. Uh, oh. <clears throat> it's my only concession to your suspicions. <laughs> expect the best. Prepare for the worst. That is all I am saying. We'll never make time for delivery. Gunnar Sam, how well did you provision us? I allowed for emergencies. I attacked for 12 days, just in case. Six people. For seven, better make it ten. Well, we'll still make it. Just. Do we not provision at Gibraltar? No, we're not putting in. No cargo for Jib. Mm, I'm going to ration it. Come, sir! Yes, Mr. Mick? Gibraltar, on the port bow! Old course, we're running on. You're not putting in then, Captain? You heard what I said, Mr. May. Right. You could change crew at Gibraltar. Well, pay them off in full, because one of them dropped the tackle block. I hope you are right. And I am wrong. I hope so too, James. Oh, good. And we're all of the same mind. Ah. Enter. General? Oh, oh, please, enter. Only to say that my husband does not realise he's inflicting hardship. We're used to it. Oh, I have lived hard all my life, ma'am. Until quite recently with the uh, rebels in the South American Pampas. Don't rush me to my dotage, please. Oh, no, General. It hadn't occurred to me that years separated us, only... <laughs> Sir, I came only to apologise. The art of good generalship is to advance to the point where you may withdraw without casualties in order to advance again. You have the advantage. I have no schooling in tactics. In spite of his reputation, Giuseppe Garibaldi has never taken advantage of a woman. Unless she wished him to. Damn it, blood! You might have known. We plan to kill him at Gibraltar, yes. so we don't go to Gibraltar. Next port is the last. That's the trouble. To do it proper, we have to take over the ship. He was the captain's wife. You shut What's up! What's that? Store key for provisions and water check. Aye, come. Hmm. I hope you've brought me some news, Albert, because you know Mr. Cullen sold that druggist shop. He wasn't as concerned to help as he said, was he? No, he was not. Sarah, live in this place. It's not even a decent warehouse. I'm so sorry. You've just missed her, Elizabeth. Sarah's gone out shopping for victuals. Well, as soon as we get out of this place, we'll have a lovely shop. Well, Albert, you have got some news for me. I have, Robert. You know, uh, Melly, the chandler in Dockside. Melly's? Well, he won't sell. He has to. The palsy getting worse. I suggest you move in very smart. Offer a down payment or you'll miss it. Well, it's a bribery in chandler, I admit. What's he asking for it? Do you 250. Know? That's 50 pounds more than Cullen's price. Yes, but for a better shop, though, isn't it, Albert? Plus the ingoing. And it's very well stocked. 
And what's he asking for that, do you know? Another 200. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, Albert, but it's just not possible. You see, not till James gets back. Can't you do anything without James's say-so? Without money? No. I'm dying with James's say-so. If it were to help, I'll buy you an eating lunch, yes? Yes, then you can go back to being just a chandler and you won't have to refer anything to James. You'd like that, wouldn't you, Robert? In a way, yes. No. No, I, I, I wouldn't want to sell my shares. Well, the offer's there if you should change your mind. What is this transaction of James's? Sounds intriguing. Now, Robert's sworn to secrecy. James swearing you to secrecy? Whatever is he up to? Oh, stop asking damn silly questions. All right, then. Let's go and see Melly's shop. How many days till Livorno now, do you We'll not start. Wind's freshening. It's about to take me into the Ligurian Sea. Gives me a chance to make bonus day. You're heading too far northwest for Sardinia. La Maddalena is here. Echo. I never undertook to land you first. Now, if I take that course, it takes me a day longer. I need that day badly for my bonus day. You are heading for Livorno? Direct? Oh, you wouldn't understand. Oh, but I do understand very well. My father was a fisherman. I have served as a seaman, as a mate, and as a captain. Oh, yes, the Carmen. From Peru to China and back. The Commonwealth from New York to Newcastle. Newcastle? Newcastle coal miners presented me with that pistol. They hewed out a cargo. I was running to Genoa. I was on bonus, too. Well, then you should grasp my problem. Ah, but you do not understand mine. You do not grasp mine, Captain O'Neill. If you put into Livorno with me on board, I tell you, it is disaster for my cause. But Livorno has appeared more unfriendly to you. Ah, Prime Minister Cavour, being a man of craft and guile, he has arranged with your Prime Minister Palmerston to secrete me home. Well, then why can't you land at Livorno? Because Count Cavour will calculate the exact moment for me to show myself. Surprise is vital. Until that moment, I may, may not be seen, but I will be only a day's sail away on my island. Right. When we're at Livorno, you stay on the decks while we recover. Captain, there are spies in every Italian port paid to look out for me. As Stevedore finds that cabin door locked, he breaks in, alerts my enemies. I tell you, without surprise, I have no chance. James, this is more important than any bonus. No, it would be if I was convinced. You doubt my word. You hope to overthrow the armies of both France and Austria? You think that I'm going to gamble my bonus day on that? Your minister Gladstone gambled his whole career because he spoke out about men he saw rotting in Neapolitan jails. But you mean that if I land you at Madalena first, it'll help free one of them? Oh, of course I do. And when we have freed all my people, you will never lack for trade in Italian ports. Ah, but if you fail, General, I'll be banned from every port in Europe controlled by your enemies. I helped to overthrow tyranny in Brazil and Argentina. Will I fail my own people? James, you must give way. If I take that route, I'll never make bonus stay in Livorno. I beg you to land me first. With all of my heart. Captain, the drinking water's gone foul. What? We can't last out without water. Somebody on board is on my side. I'm not disloyal to my husband. It is providence, then. La Madalena is the first point to replenish. And I land for my island, Caprera. Now, what's all this about foul water? Ah! Take over the tiller from Carl, Jackie. Hold course till it's all over. Hi, right, Mr. Mate. The water's fine. Thank you, Captain. It was the ale Baines drank in Liverpool that was tainted. What <laughs> of a mutant is hanging? <laughs> hanging is a filthy death, Captain. A knife is clean. <laughs> He's below. Rid the Captain's life. <laughs> Keeping up his reputation till the end, eh, Captain? <laughs> Don't! If we alter course now, we could be at Madalena before anyone is dry with thirst. Convention decrees that I obey him in everything. Ask him to, please. Your eyes say that you are on my side, but you are faithful to him. My wife, Anita, she loved me like that. Please.
nobody's shown you how, let me. Right. Like that. Go on. Now, where is your captain? No, sir. On a ship like this, sailor's eyes see and remember. Where is he? The captain's in the forecastle, sir. He'd like to see you there. What does the captain want with me in the forecastle, Mr. Mate? I'm only a passenger. He didn't tell me, sir. Go below, for your own safety. Watch him, Are you on their side, Jackie? Well, I'm on the side that wins, sir. Have to be. All the crew on Mr. Mate's side? Yes, sir. What are your orders? Oh, course, sir. My side will win, Jackie. We have the captain, sir. You wait and see who wins, and then decide which side you are on. Unless you want to hang with them. Oh, I don't want to hang, sir. Then wait. James! Get below that! Captain, tell the general to come forward. Captain dies, general! Not oh, just you. It doesn't bother me which way. He dies, unless you come forward. No harm comes to the others if you give yourself up. You give me your word, Mr. Mate. I have to tell us to save their own skins. Stay there, general. There will be questions when you get to port without a captain. Have you thought of that? My orders are to execute you, general. That's what I'm paid for. That's all I want to do. Don't come for it, General. That's my orders. I advise you to wait until I am within range, even if you are a good shot. Don't worry. I won't have to reload. Only if you hold your fire. You need 10 meters range. No. It's for the knife. Go on. What, she doesn't have a pistol? General Giuseppe Garibaldi, you are a brave man. You wish to die brave, huh? When I have to. He's armed! Throw it down, General. Or the captain's dead. No! I prefer to discharge it. To die like a soldier. I spent pistol still in my hand. Fire it again. Quick about it. <laughs> Untie the captain, or you follow him. Two barrels gone. No pistol has no. Look at the muzzle. Only one barrel that breaks revolves six times. I'm tired of the Don't make me laugh. Two bullets without reloading. That's your lot. Untie the captain. A useful present, General. <laughs> James. Put into La Madalena, please. I'd already changed course. Well, Strang, join them or take orders. Orders, Captain. Pitcher of water from the galley. Water. Aye, aye, sir. Water's fine, General. But we stay headed for La Madalena. Sail on to the Heading for us fast. We've been lying off the Bordo for some days, Captain, awaiting orders. The Admiralty Telegraph says, escort you to that port, sir, that was all. Your orders come from high authority, Admiral. You often do, you know. I understand that Prime Minister Cavour himself will receive you. He's decided the time has come, then. Before we reached your island. I am most grateful to you, Admiral. My second lieutenant would lead your crew. Not in naval uniform, of course. And discharge them at Liverpool as if they were ordinary merchant seamen. Do you follow my drift? Oh, I do. Good, then let me present them to you. General. Thank you, Admiral. Now you're going home. Really home. And you must wish me good fortune. Very soon I'm going to need it. With all my heart. God be with you. I shall never forget this voyage. In all your adventures. <laughs> something peaceful, something beautiful. Is a contrast to remember. It warms me to know. Ah, 
alive, I go to you, General. It is mutual. Thanks, signed Lord Palmerston or something. Nothing. A special courier all the way from London and didn't even wait for a receipt. Two hundred pounds and no receipt. Well, of course. The face of neutrality, General Garibaldi calls it. Ah. Here, Robert, the money's in the bank now. Garibaldi? But was he your passenger? Well, say, Anne, come, come look what it says. It says that uh, Garibaldi has landed in, in, in Marsala with, with a thousand men. Only a thousand men? Ah, but the Sicilians are rallying to his flag. What are his chances of success? It says that it's possible. Uh, now, Robert, Robert, how's Mr Baines? Oh, oh, I have seen him. Mr Baines is well again. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. it. Now, I... And have you found a shop yet? Oh, I have. Old Melly's in Dockside. I'll go on in to Sarah. Yes, I've, uh, I've made a down payment. Well, I had to, otherwise we would have missed it. Uh, what price? Four hundred and fifty pounds, including stock. But uh, I knocked him down to three hundred and seventy-five, and this time I shall run the shop, James, not you. Oh, indeed you will. For our new company, new company, aye, our third company, and Eden Chandler's Limited. Does that mean that I will still run the shop? You'll just be a sleeping partner. No, oh, they'll be run like all the other companies, like an Eden Line and an Eden Warehouse. Yes. But you own 85% of the stock in, in both companies. Mm, and you own 15%. And Eden Chandler's will be exactly the same. Just a minute, James. I don't think that's quite fair. Fair? Now, let me see. Did you get Garibaldi back to Italy, or did I? 